Okay, so let's get started because we have a, a hard stop today. Um, so in this meeting, 11th of October, we have on the agenda some discussions about forum, active forum, forum and list, the FAC module. Um, we may talk about automated builds, but if Andrew joins us, uh, the repository module, extension catalogs and GitHub APIs, um, documentation and issue templates. Well, it's more, more documentation than issue template right now uh, that we should be discussing uh, pretty much a, a good part of the meeting, I think. And um, uh, we're going to talk about automated release notes and vendors and store module. Anything else people want to add to this? I would say I, I have something to talk about regarding uh, continuous integration and so forth, even if Andrew doesn't show up. Okay. So it's still, it's still under the same subject, automated builds? Yeah, Andrew's at a conference, so I doubt he... Okay. Hi, Clint. Hey. Hello. Hello. Praise the Lord. Hello. <laughs> Hallelujah. So, um, point six here is mainly announcements. We're gonna go quickly through them, but basically the um, core forums module um, has been moved back into the DNN community. It's being maintained. I forgot to write it here. It is being maintained by uh, Mr. Javender was on this meeting. Oop. Yeah, I managed to do some testing around that, but mm, yeah, need probably some more testing whether that works or not, but looks good at least. Yeah, it didn't, it didn't fail miserably. There might be yeah. some bugs, but that, that's part of the, 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 but it's working. It's not failing miserably, so. Uh, that's good news. Now, we had discussions previously about maybe maintaining active forums instead of forums, but now that we have forums working and we didn't get any news from the team at active forums, so I guess for now we're going to be maintaining forums unless something happens in the future. Um, in other announcements, the form and list module has had a new release with a few um, bug fixes. Uh, same goes for the fact module. Um, David uh, and I worked a little bit on it. Uh, there was like one issue, so David wanted to try doing a pull request on it, and uh, I went away. I found another one with uh, I don't even remember exactly what it was. So basically, it's right now a new release, and it's at zero issues. Now, in the continuing stuff, uh, automated builds. So you wanted to say something about this, uh, David? Yeah, I've been having a conversation with uh, Oliver and Mitchell about this. Uh, Mitchell's been blogging on uh, kind of a new process he's been using for the .NET Core modules and stuff. And um, he's working on something that is, he hopes that can work um, well for the community modules as well. And uh, I don't know a whole lot about it, but it seems like it's going to be pretty simple because um, the, 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 uh, it's YAML based. Yep. So it, uh, it's one of those things where it could be managed from an org level and just implemented on each repo to where you're not maintaining a build process in, in a silo. Um, and, you know, the, the question becomes how to standardize, you know, or get every, every repo really in shape to be able to follow the same model, you know, uh, for things. But uh, it seems very promising. So I wanted to, I hadn't had a chance to talk to Andrew yet on that, but uh, this is lever leveraging the, uh, Azure DevOps stuff, so could could roll real nicely uh, utilizing the uh, relationship with uh, .NET Foundation. 
So. Yeah, I guess the what's going to be hard for the, the the community modules, they all have a slightly different build process. So that that's going to take some time to standardize if we have something that's going to be under organization level. But uh, yeah, for me, I think what's important is not to break local builds and anything else that that works. I'm happy with it. Yeah, it seems like to me that the local builds would could still remain the same. This is more about what happens when a pull request is made and doing the automated builds uh, yeah. at that point. So should be able to treat those separately unless I'm just not understanding it. Yeah, well, I, I spoke a little bit with Oliver too and basically it fires up what's there. So I guess... Um, oh, I see. Mm. Yeah. Yes, that um, may be something that's... Well, I guess what would need to be standardized is pretty much the output folder. So the, the organization level script knows where to pull the result of the build. So they need to be all in the install folder or all in uh, the, uh, what's the name they give them? It's not manifest, it's, um, well, I forgot the name there. But the output, I'm sorry? Okay. Artifacts. I artifacts. Think. Yeah. So they either need to all output to an artifacts folder, or I think so. But uh, yeah, we'll speak with. Uh, I think they're going to be implementing this on the on the on the platform because the platform too has multiple projects that are being built and then all put into the install module folder or install whatever the thing is, the skins and all that. So I guess we can follow what what's done there. And we'll have something familiar for both uh, the platform and the, the modules. I know in initial conversations, Andrew was kind of thinking something different. So it'd be nice mm. to get everybody on the same page. Uh, maybe they can all join for next month's meeting and really kind of come up with a game plan here so that we can start doing what we need to with the build processes on each project to, uh, to come in line with the standard. Cool. Maybe, maybe we hear something in the MVP meeting in the hour after this one. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, don't uh, don't hold your breath on that one too much. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay, so we'll continue that discussion on a further meeting. Um, repository module. Well, we're gonna postpone this. I've got no news from uh, Steve Fabian. And Sebastian is not with us today, so let's move on to 7.3. Uh, extensions catalog, um, anything you guys want to discuss about this or it's the, at the same point it was? For me, it's, it's at, at the same point. point. Yeah. Yeah, it's at the same point. I, you know, I, I, I could put some effort towards this, but I, it really is going to require some coordination with Timo on some of this stuff. Cool, no problem. Yeah. And, and, you know, also, I have to be honest, I'm not sure. I haven't gotten a lot of feedback on the whole Envy Quick Pulse thing. Uh, I don't know if people, I mean, I see people that are using it, but they're not saying whether it's a good thing or bad thing. So I, I kind of question, all right, is this really going to be valuable to, to go through the effort of trying to put, stats and things like that into and, and maybe in the quick pulse the problem is that it's a mobile app you know <laughs> so we, I, I don't know yeah i i personally think the fact that it's a mobile app it's it's more of a demo of what can be done i'm i don't think people who install modules really search for them on mob on mobile to be uh, my opinion uh however there might be something we can link with uh, surprisingly documentation uh, that we're going to talk a bit later. Basically, the where we were going with uh, Jekyll for making uh, GitHub pages, that could be done on the project level and it can be done on the organization level. And the amount of data that it pulls from where it lives is impressive. It really pulls a lot of GitHub info. Plus, it also has all the API endpoints and the GitHub APIs are very simple for everything that's public. So the number of releases, all that, we can call a URL and get a JSON back per release with all the details. 
and Jekyll uh, will allow us to use that in different ways. I don't know if Jekyll can render XML or JSON from aggregated stuff. I, I didn't go that far, but we could have a nice uh, entry page at least inside of the core modules. Um, I don't know, maybe it's something we can link together. We'll, we'll see. Let me, let me come back again. Uh, what the original idea of the extension catalog was is to have some kind of well, not a store, but a place where people can find modules, yeah. extensions, and have an easy link to download them. That was the original idea. And I started on uh, open content on the DNN Connect.org because I had very easy access to that. But there's no real reason why the uh, extension catalog must be uh, programmed with uh, open content and or be available on DNN Connect.org website. It's completely open. I yeah. saw your discussion about the documentation and the pages, which is very, very nice. But in the end, it's just a page for one organization or for one repo. So you don't have an overview of all the available extensions everywhere. Yeah, that's true. That's the original ID for the extension catalog. I've been working with WordPress and other kinds of CMSs, and there is always some kind of, well, not a store, yeah, there are store elements in there, but there's always an overview where you can search for particular extensions. And some of them are paid, some of them are not paid, some of them have good reviews, other ones have don't have reviews. And my idea was an easier place for people to find extensions. Yeah, I agree. If, if it can be done by the GitHub pages on repository, and maybe if it's indexed correctly by Google's Google, it might help for people to find new extensions. But uh, yes, there is there is ways to uh, insert Google codes and everything. Basically, whatever you could do with HTML, you can do it. Uh, and there's also data files, so we we could technically, as long as the other projects are also on GitHub, uh, link to them. But would yeah, I guess we could have a link to them, and call the API to get the metadata about okay. them. But that would cover only projects that are on GitHub. For other projects, we would need another mechanism. I think most of them are on GitHub, but I'm, I'm not sure. I think 99% uh, of the uh, extension that I invested and put in the extension catalog are from GitHub. Yeah. And my original idea was also to, if we could have the DNN store to include those, I th we can have one place where people can find extensions either for free or paid extensions. And I, I think it's the best place for people to find extensions. So we yeah. don't, don't have X number of places where people have to go to. Yeah, totally. Uh, one thing I, I would like is to make that concept uh, an API with uh, some database storage, something that's get, gonna get cached and everything, mm -hmm. uh, because then we can use it anywhere. Uh, one one thing I like, I don't know if you're familiar, it's totally unrelated, but if you want on uh, Unraid to add a plugin, the plugin catalog is right inside, you know? Mm -hmm. That's yeah. something that we may see coming back to DNN as the, yeah. the way to install modules. So it would be cool to have that as an API because then we can use it mobile, we can use it on a website, we can use it on a service uh, such as this. Right, right. But then you, what the idea is that you don't have to download a zip file, then go back to the uh, host menu and then import the zip file to install the extension. Yeah. If you look at the other, other type of stuff like the one you show, you can just click and it will install automatically in the environment that you're working on. That's happening with WordPress, Joomla, uh, all kinds of open source stuff. There is a catalog within the CMS. The catalog pulls the data from some server somewhere. You can review it, and if you like something, you just click, and it will uh, install it in the in the uh, site you are currently working upon. Yeah, and I think that's something we're missing. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. So anyway, it's not something we're going to resolve today, but uh, it's a continuing work. Now, documentations, uh, EPT, David, uh, you were already uh, investigating different things and playing around. <clears throat> and I kind of wanted to learn a little bit about Jekyll. 
and I fell in the rabbit hole <laughs> and I actually made some some skin uh, I don't know where you guys were at so what I I discovered and I found very interesting is that the the team you use there's like on github like eight or twelve teams you can decide to use but they also added that you can make your own team put it on a repository and reference that so then you can update just the team and everything that references it gets updated and I wanted to play a little bit with this. I didn't put it yet on the NN community because I wanted to check back with you where you were, where I am, and if we need to merge some ideas. Uh, but basically, I made a team. It has all the DNN logos in SVG format to put on dark, on white, on color, black and white, all that, available to any project that references it. And uh, it has the DNN brandings and fonts. Now, for the fonts, I took this, the most similar I could find because in the branding guidelines, it's Avenir Pro and it's not a free font. So I took the most similar Google font that looks about the same. Um, and yeah, so in the team you have right now the header and it pulls the module name from wherever it's placed on. So that's dynamic, wherever you reference the team, as is the tagline. And then the documentation will be a data file that I'm gonna show a little bit after. And what's on the left pane here would be the actual documentation um, content. Uh, plus, we can access uh, GitHub metadata, and that comes from where we put the documentation. So it's per repository, nothing to configure. It's automatically uh, done. And there's the dump of the JSON. So you're gonna have all the contributors. You're gonna have the URL of the repository, all kinds of information like this. And then when it finishes listing everything that's specific to that project, it goes one level up and it pulls information from the user or the organization. So everything that's public, it's directly available without calling any API. So you're gonna have all the, the public repositories of either the user or the organization. So we could list all the repositories with links and stuff. And uh, for each project, it also lists the uh, latest release, the number of downloads, all kinds of information. This page goes on and on and on. Which I will warn you, some of that information is not accurate. So. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, really? Yeah, you have to dig elsewhere for some of that. That's that's one of the challenges I ran into. I mean, this this looks like stuff right from the API. Uh, so, like things like uh, the uh, getting the number of issues or something like that, just not there. You got to go somewhere else to get it. So, I'm not sure what all metadata gets pulled on this. Uh, but depending on which API endpoint that's coming from, uh, will dictate whether or not that's accurate data. But I noticed like. You know, things like star count and download count, or not download count, that's, that's a bad one. Um, uh, star, they call them stargazers and watchers. A lot of times those were equal in what came back, but that's not really what it is. So, Okay. Yeah. So I'm curious, like, is this just something that you have available to use elsewhere or... This is basically on the Jekyll uh, page, you have a couple of variables. One is site, and that one contains all the variables set on the site level. You have a variable called pages that contains information about the page, so the title, description, the page URL. And when the project is on GitHub, to the site variable gets a GitHub variable that contains all this, all this JSON automatically. Nothing to call, it's available. Wow. And so for here, you just put this site GitHub project title. And wherever it's hosted, it's going to pull the project title of that place. Uh, same thing for the tagline, same thing for the release page, the issues page. So those buttons here, they are created dynamically. And if I go into one of my modules here, HTML5 video, uh, the project documentation on each project. Basically, this would be the content. Everything else is the skin. 
Now, automatically, without doing anything, there's three files here. I have a download that brings me to the releases, and I have a report an issue that brings us to the issues, and the most fun one, uh, improve this page, will bring you in edit mode of the file that you see on the left here. So if I click this, I can directly come here and improve documentation, which I think is the easiest way to, to help people yeah, yeah. out with documentation. That's awesome. <laughs> that's really yeah, good. Yeah, 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 that's, that's the- That's the what we need in the part. docs there. Yes, yes, yes. You're so muted, that, you're muted, David. Oh, sorry, yeah, I was like, yeah, I know, but we're in a different context. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so man. That's very good. Plus, on that every really project good. now, it's, it's a personal project of mine, so only me shows. But if I fire up uh, my local copy, locally, I thought it was very complicated. And after playing with it for just two days, <laughs> no, actually, it's not, it's not that bad. You need to install uh, one um, installer, Windows installer, and then you need to pull like two packages and you're set up for Jekyll even on Windows. It's not super complicated. And you just clone the repository and you fire up a bundle exec Jekyll uh, serve. So just to clarify what you're saying there, just for other people's benefit, what you're showing here is the theme code base, which nobody needs to worry about that's contributing documentation. They just simply drop markdown files into a directory structure and this theme will automatically pull that in there. So yep. you, you don't need to do this unless you're working on the actual theme or, you know, developing your own theme from this theme or something like that. Yeah. 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 In two seconds, I'm going to show you how, how simple it is to put on a project. Uh, just wanted to, kind of show locally for people who want to work on the actual team, like for us that are involved in this project, uh, locally you can set in the config a reference in the, in the YAML file. Where is it? Un under underscore config dot YAML. Ah, higher. So you can set a repository in the YAML file and that will get ignored if it's on GitHub. That applies only for local development. Mm -hmm. So since locally we're not on GitHub, we can reference an actual module that is very complex as a big documentation and see a preview locally as if we were on the form and list module. And that only applies locally because when you push that to GitHub, all the content files are ignored. What's part of the team is more like the CSS and the layouts and the includes and all that. Even the data file gets ignored. So the navigation I have here for my 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 documentation documentation. <laughs> so basically, this content here is only viewable if I am on the team repository. Okay, so that right there is the hardest part about going this route, uh, EPT is managing that navigation. So if we're adding a new documentation file, it has to be added into that navigation.yaml. Exactly. That's the, that's the only difficult technical piece. It's not difficult, you see how easy it is, but it's that is the one hoop. So if somebody's adding a new, new documentation, the, yeah. Yeah. the- Now there's two approaches, because if you just dump pages and reference the page variables and loop through it, you can have a flat structure without any configuration. Like the current wikis. Yeah, so the structure will be flat, plus you don't choose the order. You can sort them alphabetically or something, but it's a flat structure. Now, I didn't have enough time to make something advanced as for a menu. Yeah, so there's no nesting. Is, is, is what you mean. So like, you can do this in the wiki. Yeah. Now you can nest pages. That won't flow automatically. That's why we have to have the na navigation YAML. Exactly. So it's not super complicated. Right now, the way I've done it on the team, uh, it doesn't support clicking on a parent page because I didn't have time because Bootstrap by default. Oh yeah, true. The skin supports uh, Bootstrap 4. It's built in. 
and um, Font Awesome uh, 5, so if you need to use icons, whatever, plus uh, Markdown supports HTML. You can have HTML inside of the Markdown. So if you need anything special and icons and whatever, you can just pull the code from uh, Font Awesome. If you need a button, you can style it using Bootstrap. So I think most people will fall in two buckets. Either you don't know anything and Markdown is simple enough that you can help, or if you know anything about HTML, you probably know about Bootstrap and Font Awesome. Uh, so that's pretty cool. Oh yeah, what I wanted to show on the local copy is that if we reference, for instance, uh, DNN Foreman lists module, then we get all the contributors listed. And um, yeah, I think I think it's 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 the way to go for documentation. I think uh, I've started making uh, to document how to use that uh, team can be done directly on the team because the content files are ignored by whatever you you pull the team from. So from a user perspective who would want to use it, uh, the instructions would be like a one page, you know, create an index MD, uh, set your GitHub pages to use the docs uh, folder, choose any theme just to have uh, the file created for you and replace in the file by that remote team and you're good to go. Then I was at the navigation. That's where I stopped because I wanted to talk a little bit with you guys. So right now, the way it's done, uh, it doesn't support clicking on a page that is apparent. So it would be either a section or a page. It, a section would not be a page. Is that something that we need or do we live with this or what? Because the, the, the issue yes. was bootstrap by default. Uh, the menus serve to expand the section. There is JavaScript plugins we can add and stuff to make it work differently. I personally think this works to where it's not, you know, that we just need to think about the way we're organizing the documentation um, with this in mind. Cool. I think yours uh, on the events is all flat right now anyways, isn't it? Right, right. Yeah. It's all wiki flat and same for reports and same for FAQ, I think, and the same for I did a number of wikis at all flat straightforward. And I like to start simple. And later on, when we have more ideas or as there are more needs or more requirements, we can always choose to enhance the things that we have already. I like that much better than we try to find the final solution and work weeks on that. Give me something that works and people can start using it and it this looks excellent to me cool so do you have anything that we want to merge in or you were pretty much more on the looking around for stuff or do you have anything committable you you actually surpassed me i was really <laughs> just trying to get the architect theme morphed into something that would look good for our community but this right here is fantastic i mean you gone above and beyond by pulling in these features and stuff like that. I mean, it's just, this is incredible. So basically what I think is, is uh, missing right now is to finish that paragraph here, you know, to explain how to build that hierarchy. I'm going to push that into the NN community and uh, we can start referencing it from maybe some small documentation projects to kick the tires. Uh, I think it, uh, now the fun part is that improving the team or improving the documentation will be pull requests. That, that's something. Yeah, are, fun you, with it. are you going to leave that in, in your, uh, organ or your account? Or are you going to put that in the community? Or? I'm going to put it in community. I just yeah. was working on my account because, uh, you're seeing the, um, you're seeing the sausage made here. <laughs> that's, that thing it being that's some good looking sausage right there <laughs> yeah <laughs> I, I i mean i was thinking about some slight styling changes on the uh nav over there but uh yeah you know, uh, nice to get that in a repo so we'll start helping yeah totally and now now what's cool is that uh yeah so everything is a pull request plus another thing i see very cool is that if there's a pull request for a new feature or 
a change of how a feature works on one of the modules, uh, we can bundle that change with the documentation change in the same pull request. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, I'm yeah. just thinking of some basic getting those icons flush over to a side and you know, cool. those badges and just some cleanup stuff, but this is awesome. Awesome. So, yeah, and I think we need a footer also, but I wasn't sure what to put in the footer, so kind of just stop there. Okay, so I'm going to push this into the NN community, and uh, what module could we choose? Uh, what's going to be fun is that it supports Markdown, and you can have HTML in Markdown, so we can take almost all documentation, unless it's a Word document or a PDF, and just move it in and set the structure and then go clean up a bit. But it should be pretty straightforward. Uh, what project could we use as our test bed? Uh, I think we were planning on doing it on events. Uh, the only thing is this not going to have nested. I think if you look at the reports, it's, it's, it's quite complete as far as the documentation. There's a nice uh, wiki. Okay, reports. That was um, uh, search. There it is. It's in it's in the wiki. Yep. It it's flat though still. Yeah. So, yeah. No but situation. I mean, we could we could use this one uh, to start because, like, once we put it, because the process will be getting the the docs folder set up. We'll clone the wiki as as a repo locally, and then commit that to the docs folder structure, and then come in and turn off the wiki once that's working. And the other thing we need to remember to do is in the description of the repo, putting a link to the documentation, and also in the main readme file. Do do we want to do the first one on a complex module, or should we take something more like the FAC, which has few pages that we could group together and just start with a simple one? Yeah, we can. Well, do it. If FAQ is a simple one, start with that one. I Across think the so. Ideas. There's like yeah. six, seven, eight, nine, nine pages, and you can see, you know, managing, managing, managing. I think managing could be a category, and then. Uh, we can have to, I think, yeah, it's a good start point. small. Yeah. Okay, so let's start with the FAC module. And uh, it's better, I think, to have problems on a small one. Yep. That's true. So, and this module is not going to be getting any pull requests anytime soon, probably too. So that's another good thing. So we won't have to worry about merge conflicts. Yeah. Uh, move the uh, DNN community team to, uh, yeah, another thing, ideas just keep coming up. Uh, the team, uh, we can have conditions on the team. So let's say we have a common header and footer, but we want something different when it's on a project page and when it's on the organization page, we can filter for that condition and render some block on a project page and some other block in the organization page. So in the organization page, we could have uh, a block to write whatever we feel like writing, and we can leave that section to list all the products, maybe make it bigger and include, you know, I would like to find a way to indicate compatibility, but I don't know. I've see, I was thinking of using it on the organization level to replace the spreadsheet we have here. Um, some way of replacing this, because most of what's there is available directly without pulling any API, uh, except compatibility here. So I don't know if we can find a tag, and if that tag is there, we know it's been tested with the latest release or something, I don't know. Uh, that's to investigate, but one thing that would be cool is to have the uh, download count, the total download count, and the latest release download count with the latest release date, which is all available, and we can graph out 
what's downloaded, you know. Uh, yeah, that's an idea for the future, but uh, the data would be there. Okay, so I'm going to push the team to uh, DNN community and uh, people, uh, EPT, EPT and David uh, can submit, uh, can commit uh, to the team and we will start using it on fac module as a first trial. If you come up with ideas for the footer, uh, just go ahead and uh, make a footer section. Yeah, I already have an idea for that, so I'll, I'll take cool. that on. So that's awesome. Uh, anything else on that subject? We're good. If uh, there's any more, I might like go, you know, I, I might get all worked up. <laughs> <laughs> might have to go smoke a cigarette exactly <laughs> um, okay automatic release no tp team when you come no. back uh end of november cool no problem is he on another european holiday is, i mean no in this case i'm going to new zealand it's the 13th month well, what does that mean like because it's new zealand it's not a holiday <laughs> <laughs> it's a holiday. <laughs> Man, I got to move to Europe. Good Lord. I mean, I can't even schedule meetings anymore from like, uh, what are we at? From like April to like uh, November. November. <laughs> you go schedule a meeting with anybody in the European side, man. It's like, oh, I'm jealous. Uh, it's, not, it's not a normal holiday, six weeks. Normal holidays are three weeks here in Europe, but I, it, New Zealand is far off. So we, we decided it's our fifth, a fortieth uh, year's anniversary of our marriage. So we do a big holiday, and we're going to the farthest place that we can decide. And New Zealand is the other side of the world. Well, it's about cool. thirty hours traveling, so it's 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 far away. And if you go for one week or two weeks, it's no. So we did six, we are going six weeks, which is great, I hope. Yeah. Yeah, it should be a good trip. I'm just jealous. I, I don't even know what I would do if I was away for six weeks. <laughs> <laughs> so including symbols and release packages, I was trying to do it on, I don't remember which module, which I was touching for something else. And it did not want to install as a DLL. So I don't know if the manifest assembly uh, node only supports DLLs or what's the story, but I run out of time to try it better. So I don't know if it has to go with the files node in order to push it to the bin folder. Uh, I know if you put it there manually, there's no side effects and you get uh, details when you run into a an exception, but uh, I have to find in the manifest what's the correct way to actually install it. Anyone did it? No. Uh, I think the uh, uh, DNN platform has a symbols package that you can install. So there must be some reference there what the place is in the install manifest to put the, P or the, uh, the PDBs. I think it's the file it's section or, or the resources dot zip, something like that. Okay. But the DNN symbols package zip is installable. As far as I know, yes. Okay. It's we'll not something to do manually. I think it's just an installable package. So next module I touch, I'm going to reference that and try it out. Uh, we haven't mentioned the events module. How is it going? Uh, you think it's uh, for this week? Do you need hands? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have just one day left. I can tell you the uh, difficulties that I had. One of my developers converted to C Sharp, went okay for most cases, but he also uh, implemented a new uh, settings API for DNN 8. And that was done nicely. 
but and now is the complication the uh, casing of the oh. names of the settings in the tables of let's say module settings or portal settings the casing in there is important if you retrieve the settings using the new dnn settings api wow what my developer did was use nice pascal casing in the module itself but now the old settings from a pre dnn 7 or uh, dnn uh, event 7 version the settings names in the tables are mostly in lowercase and not correctly pascal casing so if you install the module for free new, it works all right. But if you upgrade an existing DN, uh, events version six, it doesn't read the uh, correct existing settings. So for example, I, I got across that one when somebody said, hey, the RSS feed doesn't work anymore. And I tried it in, in a new install and it works correctly. I tried it in an old install, it works correctly. But when you upgrade an old the events version to the new one, when you call it for the first time, the settings, it's not uh, carried forward from the old version. And that's because the old version stores the settings name in lowercase, whereas the new version expects the settings as uppercase. And it's not a difference in the SQL uh, query, but it does a difference in the DNN API for settings that compares it completely using casing. And it was, shouldn't be a problem if there are a few settings in events, but there are 150 setting, settings in events. So yes. I'm now working through all the module settings and uh, using the API possibility to reference an other naming of the setting. And I use the naming that is in the original events six version. But 150 is a whole list. Yes. I'm going through that, yeah. And what's the solution to that? It would be an SQL script to clean them up during an, during upgrade? Uh, during upgrade uh, yeah, I, if I want to do it, I want to, version. if I want to do it correctly, I want to do it good. So I, I want to go through all the settings and make the casing of every setting correct and then uh, generate, which I can do, uh, generate an SQL script that does the 150 updates. But currently, I try to modify all the settings already in, in the new uh, C Sharp version, and sometimes it didn't compile or build anymore. So I'm going back to the oh. stage that it worked, and I'm going to add the uh, parameter uh, attribute to the module setting so I can specify the old name in the existing event six version and it retrieve it retrieve it correctly. I think I'm going to propose an issue for the DNN APR for settings so it doesn't care about uh, casing anymore because I think for the SQL, uh, lowercase or uppercase are not important if you do a query. Uh, but for the C sharp comparison in the DNN API, it does make a difference between a setting name that is in lowercase compared to the DNN API name that is Palcal's casing. And it doesn't uh, recognize that the lower casing is not the same as the Pascal casing. I hope I can explain it a bit, but at the, the biggest difficulty is there are 150 settings. So it's yeah. a lot to go through. Yeah. And we're working so, through it. I hope to finish it tomorrow. I have one day left before the holidays. I have a day off tomorrow okay. to prepare myself. I think I did about 30% of testing it, and I have to do the other 70% as well. Okay. Awesome. I, so, one, one bigger issue, I, I don't have time, that it was the issue that you mentioned that the date that you select on the events module page is not triggering a, uh, a code behind event. And yeah, I don't think it's a huge uh, road blocker, but uh, yeah, it's something I noticed after the C-sharp conversion. Yeah, so I, I, I've seen it on the template retrieval and save as well, and I have to add a event uh, handling myself in the init code, in the code behind. So I have to see if I can do the same for the date selection. Yeah. Okay, cool. So on the agenda, I'm just going to put that you're working on it because I'm, I don't know if you can finish. I try to finish it tomorrow. tomorrow so yeah. Yeah. We, we'll see how that goes. Um, then in the new business, we have the vendor modules, which when I made my list of uh, modules, which I closed, I totally forgot about this one, but I got a request um, this week from uh, Francisco Perez, 
who basically said uh, it still works, but it's using tables, so it would need a little bit of cleanup to make it uh, either inherently responsive or to be templatable. So that's something I might uh, tackle soon. I just need to talk with Francisco and someone who has a test bed because I know there's some specific industry standard banner sizes and I don't know what's the correct plan here to go something fixed size or responsive or templatable or so it's still in the discussions but that's one we gonna probably work on this week or something uh, same for the store so uh, Addison is hosting the DNN open Fridays and uh, someone mentioned the store uh, module is actually using it and uh, needs an update for um, a bug it was having upgrading and uh, basically I found the store module had a repository from uh, Jill Le Pigache. Um it was it had like been maintained a little uh, until a few months back and uh, the thing is there was no release that was complete it's missing half the sql scripts and basically the installer is uh is bad and uh plus that repository was saying that uh, it would no longer be maintained so i didn't like that so i pulled that into the nn uh, community um it's not the best store module that's uh for sure uh, there's much better around there, but people using it still need to to keep it and be able to upgrade. So right now I found what was missing. I restored them from Codeplex. So it was the early scripts like from one dot something that were missing in the package. I retrieved them. Uh, the SQL scripts were built for an old, old version of SQL, so the scripts were failing on recent versions. I did a big cleanup there with the, the sys objects and stuff. I got an installable package that works. However, I have no test bed, so I cannot say anything about upgrades. I cannot say anything about usability of actually ordering products and all that. But there's no errors, there's no deprecated APIs, and the installer works. Um, I'm coordinating with Lee. I think he, ha he was busy one or two days, but he has a good test bed. So we're going to work together on, on him trying it out and reporting issues and uh, bringing that back to, to life, at least working, you know. So that's in the projects too. And Daniel, if y'all want, I can show you the text that I'm going to send out with the digest for the community projects. I mean, it's nothing huge, but I know you were saying uh, you wanted to be cautious on the wording of a couple of them. Yeah, I just don't want to falsely excite people. <laughs> yeah, well, if, so, you, if I can share a screen just for a second, uh, I will show you. So are y'all able to see this? Yep. So this is just the blog version that I, you know, do um, the project updates. I'm going to replace this image with the. I'm still image. seeing Daniel's screen. I, uh, uh, I can stop my sharing. Maybe hold on a second. You can select in the top, Share. at least in my Windows version, which screen you want to view. Ah, okay. Now I see it. Yeah. Okay. My bad. Um, I always wait until the day of for this insights image so that it, the month will match. Anyways, the, the, what we're focusing on here, at least for this, is this section. You know, this is when I send the email out. So I kind of broke it down into new releases and then general updates. Uh, Daniel, this is the info that you, you know, sent over plus one that will send over. And then just for general updates, uh, these were the ones that we were talking about. Yeah. Uh, uh, do you group any open source project as a DNN community project? For for instance, Hotcakes. It's open source, it's free and all that, but is yeah, it considered I mean, a community project? Uh, well, so I don't... Uh, so what you're saying is it's not maintained under the GitHub like community projects, right? So that... I'm just discussing semantics, you know? Yeah, so I can 
I, I don't really care, but it's just one thing I care is the core modules. I want that naming to be really modules that came with DNN in the past. Yeah. Uh, the rest, I think what we discussed earlier was that a community module would be maintained by the community and would have no string just attached, no brand names. Yeah. And everything else would be a, so, an open source module for DNN. So I just don't, I don't, I don't care that much about this than about core. But uh, maybe just a double check. I should on... probably move this one to like a different section. And just call it like open source extensions or something. Yeah. Okay. No, that's that's good feedback. I will, and that's why I'm showing it to y'all so I can not mess up. <coughs> um, I will do that. I will create a new one. So basically, you got being in community projects, being in platform. I'll create another heading, and maybe I'll like. Uh, italicize these so that it'll kind of stick out differently. Um, but anyways, it's listing the releases and then for general updates, this was the verbiage that we were, and I'm trying to give people shout outs, right? So like I'm linking the people's names where appropriate. Uh, EPT, that said you were working on events and you like there would be a release at some point, you know, we're not putting any dates, same thing with the store. Uh, cool just said that you're testing. So if, if all that's accurate, then I'm good. Uh, I will just readjust this. Sounds good to me. I, uh, how, how do people feel about, about hotcakes being in the community section? I, I, I think we're walking a tight line just a bit there because there are tons of what's been called in the past community modules that I know is not literally DNA community running all that modules but you start giving people the idea that they're not part of the dna community and that's gonna be a problem so yeah, yeah, I, I don't feel strongly about this point i feel strongly about the terminology core module because uh it, it started and i had to kind of cut it short because everybody was giving modules away to the core no 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 a core module was one that originally came you know so yeah. they're just dumping uh, stuff I mean, in you our courtyard you could easily distinguish those, you know, in a separate list there, um, you know, uh, Clint, you know, and you could say other community releases, you know, yeah. or something like that instead of. Yeah. Or, or leave it under community, but the core ones move them on the core heading. Okay. What do you think? Yeah, I mean, like all of these link to GitHub, right? But when you click this one, it's linking the Scrolls uh, blog. Yeah. Right. So it is a little bit of a different experience. Uh -oh, somebody just had an ESPN update. What happened? Yeah, um, bit, anyway, bit, we, we can move that that uh, naming and branding discussion uh, maybe to Slack after the next meeting. Um, it's something maybe we can get uh, Ash in touch because I know I had a long discussion about branding and naming uh, with him. So we might just double check his opinion on this uh, after the, the next meeting. You're going to be available, Clint? After the next, you're talking about after this MVP meeting? Yeah. Uh, yeah, for, I mean, for I'm a little slack. bit. Yeah. Uh, I, I should, yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, I, I'll, I'll be around. I'll be connected. I just have a couple of daddy duties that I have to take care of, but they also follow at different times too. So yeah. Okay, well, it's going to be by text. It's just, it's just. Uh, I want to check a discussion we had with Ash regarding uh, branding and naming and some more uh, unrelated stuff that that we need to talk here. I think. Um, okay, so thanks everybody, and um, uh, we'll so that meeting's gonna be in two weeks. <laughs> yep, <laughs> see you soon. All right, uh, APT, you not coming? All no. right, no, we'll send you. Right. Thanks, All everybody. Right. Take yeah. care.